Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we're going to take a look at a really cool new knife from a new company. Uh, we're going to um, check out two really cool knives. One of them is a cold steel I have wanted for a long time. And then how do knives fit into your self-defense strategy? I'm interested. Uh, you know, I always am from time to time talking about that. So I definitely want to hear a about that from you. I, I know it fits in there somehow. You think of them uh, in a, in a self-defense continuum in some way or other. And so I'm interested to hear about that. Of course, it is the third Thursday of the month. That means Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. And this week or this month, we're giving away the Civivi Spiny Dogfish. This is a uh, Michael Gavco design. Gavco Knives, he kind of came up at the same time uh, initially in Pennsylvania with uh, uh, Tough Thumbs. Uh, Jeff Blauveld uh, was Tough Thumbs and now is Tough Knives making really cool uh, customs. Well, so is uh, Gavco and Michael Gavick and his knives are all based on sharks. Uh, this is the spiny dogfish. So we will be giving away not only this, uh, but a very uh, nice um, bench top knife sharpener from Cold Steel. It's a fixed angle sharpener and you know what it is factory sealed so i don't even want to open it um but uh, i'll show this off in, in a short while these are both courtesy courtesy of this old sword uh blade reviews so thank you very much for that sir and thank you uh patrons one and all and uh just anyone who happens to be happening <laughs> who happens to be here and watching such as mr pete davidson good to have you here sir he says good day bob jim and the rest of the junkie How's it going, junkies? How's it going? In my country, the harsh reality is if you want to stay out of your court and prison, uh, knives must not fit into anyone's self-protection strategy. Uh, yeah, and you know what? You know what's happening in this country, Pete, is that self-defense at all is not supposed to fit into your self-defense strategy. You're, you're now like uh, basically expected to lie down and die for any criminal here in this country. You can see that, by the way, Daniel Penny in New York City has been treated uh, just appalling. Uh, but anyway, Pete, uh, you say, uh, if you must use a tool to defend yourself, uh, I feel your best bet is something improvised, like a fist full of sharp keys, a sturdy drink bottle you can grip onto, or even a small non-tactical torch. Oh yeah, oh, you can't have the tactical flashlights either. What about a hammer? Are you allowed to walk around with a hammer? Uh, that makes a great self-defense weapon. Uh, Pete Davidson says, I can't wait until I look old enough to use a walking stick. Yes, sir. Darn my boyish good looks. Don't darn them, sir. They will go away soon enough. Uh, and you'll get to walk around with that sword cane and no one will look askance. Ground fog. Good to have you here, sir. Ground fog. Top of the evening to you. Have a knife day. Have a knife day. Sent me a, a great video the other day. Good to have you here, sir. Good evening, Junkie Nation, he says. Uh, it is at a response level. Uh, at, oh my gosh, let me start that again. It is at a response level that is a last resort. Uh, I have mace and other levels to go through as proper threat level response. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I, I wonder if knuckle dusters are a good uh, addition because that's what I've been carrying recently, you know, uh, uh, for the fantasy rumble uh, that's about to happen. Uh, but uh, to be serious, uh, I got. I got some mace myself uh, recently. I got a six pack of this stuff. It came recommended, I think, by Cutlery Lover. Got a six pack of them, doled them out to the ladies, and I have that and a couple of extras. Uh, I haven't had to use it, thank God, but I uh, got it around. I have one on my desk at work. It looks just looks like a highlighter, basically. So I just had to leave it right on my desktop. Uh, someone ever ha hassles me, they get a face full of that, reach under the desk, decide whether I need to pull the the pairing knife. Pat D's nuts. Nice to have you here, Pat. Uh, I, I saw that you emailed me. Uh, actually, uh, everyone um, uh, who has emailed about numbers, I will get, I'll make sure that your numbers are uh, on the um, Nova 2s. Pat D's nuts says, hello all. My defense has changed, unfortunately, in the last two years, and a knife has moved up the list for protection. I now carry a fixed blade scout style appendix. Uh, first, use my feet and some pepper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your feet uh, to both run and kick. Uh, you know, uh, I saw, I can't remember who it was, self-defense expert. I watch a lot of those uh, videos on YouTube just for fun. 
And he was, oh, he was a sea lot guy. Uh, that's right. He was an Indonesian sea lot guy, uh, you know, probably about my age. So in his 50s, in great shape. And he was talking about like, uh, yeah, you got to run, uh, but try and do a little bit of damage. So that guy can't run as well because you don't know. He might be in great shape. You might be winded. You might whatever. Uh, you might have just eaten a full dinner at a restaurant and like ate too much like I usually do and won't be up for running. So you got to do a little damage before you run. Uh, Patty's nut says spray to escape. Uh, thank you. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, second, my hands and feet to fight if I can evade. Yep. Don't forget your. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, last option, my blade. I've set up a human shaped target in the house to practice combat throws and underhanded half rotation throws. Though that's cool. That is awesome, man. Uh, there's a dude I've been watching on Instagram who's 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 doing that kind of stuff. Uh, very, very cool. Um, getting better and better at that. Yeah. I mean, and it's the last thing they'll expect. It's too much out of a movie. Dave, this old sword. Good to have you here, Dave. Evening all best blade strategy is to sharpen the will and discipline the spirit and mind control the attitude and calmly wait for the right moment. The size, shape, or maker is far less important. Yeah, we've had that conversation here in the in the earlier days of Thursday Night Knives. What knife would you want? Uh, you know, obviously that is a uh, a, a tongue in cheek question. No one wants a knife in their gut. But uh, to be serious about your point, yes, uh, like a big part of it is being able to control your emotions uh, too. You might train and then go emotionally off the um, off the deep end, and then your training goes out the window. Yeah. Uh, good, good comment there. Uh, Doug Bowl says as a retired law enforcement officer, when writing use of force statements, it includes to stop this course of conduct from continuing. Then the action taken was sta stated, never use more than what is needed. Yes, sir. Like a good stomp on the, on the instep, uh, might stop someone, uh, it might uh, cause them to pull the, the pistol from their ankle uh, holster, but at least it will give them pause. It will make it hard to run and, uh, you know, just come right down, break the bone. Gus Beck says, uh, good evening, all good to have you here, Gus. And, uh, and one and all I've been, uh, reading off these comments and not properly addressing you guys. So Gus, it's great to have you here. Good evening. All today. I carried a spider co P I T S P I T S. Is that a neck knife with a ring on it? A ring through it. Um, the Kershaw blur. Awesome. I've been seeing a lot of people showing off their blurs recently, and I don't know why I never got one and got the Rosecraft Nola Chucky in the mail. Very cool. No, Nola Chucky. That is that beautiful green Brown, uh, antique bone handled jackknife with the um it's got the drop point that's a beautiful looking one excuse me in the machine ground swedge uh i'm i'm there are a couple of rose crafts i'd like to catch up on sword xxxy good day bob jim and junkies well sword good to have you here uh if you're saying good day is that does that mean you two are in australia blade ogre good to have you here sir hello all hell my gosh, my mouth isn't working today. Hello, all, he says. Well, hello to you, James Moore. Hello, he says. Uh, James Moore always has something interesting in his pocket, uh, always something uh, exotic. Uh, splitting slices. Nice to have you here, Bry Byron. Howdy, Bob, Jim, and junkies. Self-defense with a knife. Sounds like I failed in many areas, including situational awareness, uh, to get to this point. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, here's here's a... Here's a uh, uh, Alex, good to have you here. Here I am, he says. Well, it is wonderful to have you here, sir. Craig Vincent, howdy, Bob, Jim, and all manner of knife folk. Howdy, Craig. I'm going to be showing off some of the things I got from you. Uh, here's here's a little illustration of that uh, uh, situational awareness point. Um, and that is uh, through a Taylor Swift song that I've been forced to listen to in the car with my daughters. And my, and, and my one daughter's like, oh, I love this song. It's so sad. Like, they're going off on a vacation and... Um, she's, he's going to propose and she's going to break up. It's so sad. And I'm like, that guy has no clue. He needs this to happen because right now he is totally clueless. He has no idea he's about to be broken up with. Like there is something wrong and it's with him. So, uh, he needs this. Don't be sad. Uh, Jesse, good to have you here, sir. Evening all he says, well, evening to you, sir. Uh, we're going to find out what everyone's carrying in a second. Krav Magalak or Krav Maglock. I love it. Now lurking. Lurking has been engaged. 
Gus Beck, anyone order any spire? Oh, uh, before I get there, I'm assuming you do Krav Maga, and I've been noticing, and I was just talking about Sea Lot, Sea Lot, Krav Maga, very lots of similarities. Gus Beck says, anyone order any spider codes on that one day sale? I got a standard Manix 2 and a stretch 2XL salt, hollow ground H2, for a total of 225 clams. I said clams because, you know, H2. Wow, that's really good, man. I didn't hear about that. But I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't hear about that. I've been, you know, not as disciplined in my spending. Though I haven't dipped into any any place I shouldn't be, but I'm trying to save up for Blade Show. And um, you know, with the with the with the knife junkie money, trying to trying to save up. So it's it's a roughin. Uh let's see here. Uh Five Door says, Greetings, Bob Jim and Junkies. Well, I say to you, Five Door, good to have you here. We have a drawing for you and your like, your kind tonight. Uh that that being gentlemen junkies, we do have the knife giveaway and the sharpener knife and sharpener because this is so dull no i'm just kidding it's not stephen clayton jr how to how, how to how do you doing sir how are you doing sir uh our resident t kel knives aficionado uh anthony good to have you here anthony chayman i carry a knife because i live in new york and can't get a pistol easily yes sir i was in your shoes for many years well maybe not many 10 years 10 to 12 years. Can't really remember now. So long ago. Uh, Stephen Clayton says, but uh, by the way, be careful with that. Make sure no one sees it. You want to, uh, you don't want to get pinched for that. End up in Rikers. Stephen Clayton says, get the TS87 from T uh, uh, from Kel Knives. TS87. Which one is that? Ooh, ooh, I can't wait to find out which one that is. Who's your hippie? Good to have you here. Who's your hippie? Hang on. Let's see. Sometimes this chair, I have a brand new chair. I just have yet put it together. So when I do, I will be much happier. Who's your hippie? Uh, something to be said about a good screwdriver. Yes, you know, uh, I'm I'm with you. Like uh, I like improvised weaponry. I love a, a, a heavy plumbing nut on a piece of cord. Whack! It's like a it's like a medieval morning star. But you know, you can you can put its component parts in your bag and fly with it, and no one notices or cares. Uh, will B says. Hey, hey, Bob. Well, Will, it's great to have you here, sir. Jim and everyone, I was trying to get an update on Israel's attack on Iran. Uh-oh. Hadn't heard it. I was catching up on the morning's news uh, today and, uh, I mean, this evening before uh, starting up here. And that's a funny thing. Like, I, I always get all worked up. And uh, as soon as this starts, ah, all that lifts for two hours. And uh, I, I need to catch up. Uh, on the on the afternoon's events, Doug Bowl says, "Bob, uh, as a seventies old, um, have had knee replacement. I train with high quality crook cane to keep distance. Awesome. My sog uh, sog winder is my backup if if distance is broken. Uh, heaven forbid. But that that cane, um, Doug, have you seen the the French Lacan?" Lucan, it's a cane fighting martial arts. Martial arts, very cool. Uh, it's taught a lot with savat, um, and there's a lot of probably. If you haven't seen Lucan, I'm sure you're doing a lot of the same stuff anyway. Uh, but check it out. It is a cool art, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're training. I think everyone should train. Uh, it's like uh, Danny Nosanto, and in, in seminar had said to, um, yeah, I've heard him say this a number of times and seminars over the years that i've attended where he's like well I, i'm five years older and i've eliminated some techniques and changed some techniques i'm definitely not kicking to the head anymore um definitely like focused on the knees and and the groin and lower and you know so just just recognizing his age and changing up his his um well his his toolbox i guess if you will josh 33025 how you doing sir hello there he says well hello right back at you that lake uh looks serene there sir uh five door says self-defense despite my style preference a knife is very much a last resort but i typically want one to be suitable yeah that is for for me suitable is uh, also has to do with aesthetics and my aesthetics and, and my taste runs towards the tactical just because I like the way they look. So to a large extent, uh, it's going to be capable. Uh, but I know what you mean with all of the other knives that aren't like that. That's always the first thing I, I kind of consider. Not that um, 
my lifestyle uh, has required it, knock on wood. And hopefully things remain like that. Uh, Watching Cut says, I don't believe knives uh, to be a good source of self-defense. It takes longer than police realize, uh, than people realize. It's all about uh, timers. Yeah, timers and bleeders, right. Uh, uh, switches and, oh, wait, here. Uh, yeah, and switches, nerve bundle. Yeah, right. Right. And if you're slashing, which is uh, going to be most people's um, um, inclination, yeah, that 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 takes a long time. There's a movie called Rope by, um, it's been years since I've seen it, but Alfred Hitchcock, Rope. And there's a scene, uh, an uncut scene, and I believe uh, uh, a film mag at that time was 11 minutes long. And I think they still are uh, on a big 35 millimeter camera. And it was uh, like a full mag of a guy getting strangled you know two characters in a tussle uh, or, or i don't remember exactly i think one is murdering the other it wasn't like a self-defense thing and uh to kill him with a rope and he's strangling him but it's hard work and it takes like a full can of film if i remember uh correctly to, to and it really illustrates it's not easy like in the movies like in uh, godfather 2 where where the hitman comes up with the coat hanger and you know puts it around the guy's neck and in, in like 10 seconds he's dead on the ground i guess it doesn't happen that way um, um yes alex excellent point uh gus beck says I, I always talk my way out of any scary situation yes sir that's the way to do it second i will leave third are improv uh improvisational weapons like a gas or uh, you know can lid i'm a, a, a trash can lid but i'm thinking of like sesame street trash cans from the 70s which don't exist anymore uh or but i know what you mean uh improvise just things all around you uh, i would do minimal damage and still flee i am not a fighter yeah 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 uh i i am not either i am not either and fighters are real <laughs> i'm sure a lot of you guys out there are um you know, uh, I, I hopefully in, in a fight, uh, I could draw upon my training. I only have, and, and, and it was once and it was not what I expected. Uh, watch and cut says another thing to consider is if a guy is better and ends up taking it and using it against you, something really important to keep in mind, uh, not even necessarily better, but more motivated and more experienced and, and more ruthless. You know, I, 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 it would i i think it, it, i think i hope it would be hard to take a knife from me but who knows maybe not <laughs> depending on size experience um aggression levels of aggression commitment and and how quickly other people get violent you know i, I don't know how quickly i get violent uh, it, sober i hate to put it that way but uh you know, the, the, the one time I had to use martial arts, I was not in, I was drunk. And so that is not, I don't think that's all right. Uh, the, the right circumstance to, well, I guess it depends on how, how often you're drunk, I guess. Craig Vincent says my self-defense plan is to carry so many knives at once. The sheer weight of them causes the ground in front of my assailant to shift rapidly. I love it. In the ensuing confusion, I can swiftly flee uh, the conflict area. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know what? I've been digging a lot. I, I never have them around when I want to talk about them. But here, here are two great examples. But these aren't the ones that I like the best. Uh, but pens, and not even tactical pens. But here are two heavy metal pens here. And, and uh, hey, how's it going? Northern Knives. Hey, Jim, Bob, and Junkies. How's everyone doing tonight? I think we're doing great. Uh, I'm, I'm just waxing. We're waxing poetic about improvised weapons at the moment. But, like, you have something like this. And uh, n not that it's a fight ender or you're going to, uh, you know, save a crowd with this, but uh, it, it could help uh, shift the balance in pain uh, to your advantage for a moment to take take advantage of the opportunity to run or to use something else or to something like that. Yep. Another Aussie here. Awesome, Sword. Good to have you uh, all the way from the other side. That's so cool. That is so cool how far away you are. And yet, here we are having this conversation. <clears throat> Gus says, the Spyderco Pits is a three-ish inch N690 CO blade, blue anodized titanium handle with tons of speed speed holes oh it's got a and a back strap of the handle creates a slip joint on the blade tank super nice walking dog okay i i was going somewhere else speaking of a little snort uh josh says flicking my kaiser ultimate Militaw. 
that's a cool knife that that has been one from this past uh what four or five months or i guess new to 2024 that has been a crowd pleaser people have been loving that ts87 is a screwdriver okay so that's the one it's kind of like the winkler uh that i've uh, had here on loan um something that you can use as, as a screwdriver but it's also you know built to to breach other to breach things uh will be says i'm going to be driving and listening for a bit got you will well uh if you can type it in you don't you don't have to wait till the pocket check to let us know what you had uh but uh if uh you know just honk twice if it starts with uh well, I think I know what it's going to be. Bill Armstrong. Good to have you here, Bill. Uh, I own Cane Master Canes made of hickory. Oh, Bill, we were just talking. Well, I'm sorry. I just re-welcomed you. Hickory. Oof. Cane Master Canes made of hickory. I have a feeling that's something I should write down. And I'm going to do that right here. I should check that out. I got my dad, uh, who likes to walk um, Cane Master Canes. Uh, I got him a few years back this thing called a Bubba stick. It's like a cane with a big um, a brass ball on the end that he could use to like, you know, brain a little dog, uh, brain a big dog if it if it came up on him. Uh, I also carry a decal knife, says Bill. Excellent choice, sir. Um, and uh, that's a cool that's a cool stick. Though I do find that the weight of whatever the wood is, it's heavy, but it's not heavy enough to balance the hev heaviness of the of the ball at the end so uh, maybe a a, a, a a a what's it called a ferrule at the bottom to weight it would be better craig says during the spider go sale i had three of them in my cart but i hesitated and prices changed oh my god uh however i did score on a different sale with cold steel mayhem my second in the past week now i have three craig vincent three that's that is tremendous. I like that. That warms the cockles of my heart. You should have one of them, if if you don't mind my saying, you should have one of them serrated or, you know, uh, somehow uh, modified. That'd be kind of cool. It's easy for me to say because they're not my mayhems. Doug Bowles says, yes, I have a uh, scene Lacan. Great style. I use a lot of police wooden baton training we had uh, with the cane. Oh, that's cool. So when you had that... Uh, uh, was that like with that with the tanfa? That's what we used to call them in like karate class. But the with the 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 um, the nightstick that has the the perpendicular piece that you hold on to. I always thought those were really cool. Northern Knife says I carry a Bastinelli ice cream ice pick sometimes. That's cool. But in Alaska winter, uh, it's not out of place as it would be in a, a lot of places in the lower forty eight. That's funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like that spot. You know, that's that's also uh, so the pen that I really like. OK, it's definitely not the pen that I really like is a Parker Jotter, a very, very classic pen. They've been around, you know, pro, uh, professors have been using them since like the 40s or something. like. They've been around forever. It's got the colored barrel and then the top clicky part is silver. It's got the arrow clip. Well, they make them in full uh, stain stainless steel. Um, either silver or they have them with the colored barrels in stainless steel. And uh, they really, you can, you can abuse, you can punch them through a lot of cardboard with the, with the ink out. And then you just bang on it uh, though. Do be careful. You can bust the ink that way, but it doesn't matter. You can give that person a tattoo uh, to remember the experience by Anthony says, I'm interested in the warden's cane. I can't find a lot about them, but what I gather, they were threaded steel rods covered with stacked leather. Yo. Mm. So they're springy. Uh, uh, I'm not so intrigued by them. I may build one. Oh, I'm so intrigued by them. I may build one. That, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I can think of something that was kind of like that. Uh, so, in sort of like a sap with a spring in it covered in leather uh, from, you know, I don't know, the earlier 20th century that I have in a weapons book. I wonder if it's kind of the same thing. The problem is alcohol makes violence fun. Uh, no, it, it, to me, uh, the one time I I, uh, I used it, it wasn't fun, but it, it made it feel like no big deal. And later I was like, mm. it could have been a big deal. It didn't, it wasn't, but it could have been. And I wasn't thinking that way. And I, I guess when you're young and stupid, you don't think that way. Um, uh, I'm less stupid and less young. 
So, and I have more to, uh, more that I care about in the world. So, Doug Bowles says, Amen on the pens, Bob. Yes, yes. You know, a pen, a ruler. Uh, uh, Danny Nosanto like travels with a, with a, um, what do you call it? Like a drafting kit, or at least he used to, uh, that includes a metal um, ruler. And he's showing how he would use it if he had to uh, take someone out on an airplane with a ruler. He, I'm sure he could. Uh, Stephen Clayton says, I also carry several pens that could be used tactically. Yes. Uh, uh, I know the tactical pens are awesome, but to me, they're always a little too heavy, a little too thick, a little too pointy, and a little too long. Uh, so the pens I like... Uh, tend to be stout anyway so a guy who has knives in the shower will react when needed thank you alex thank you my someone who truly recognizes the genius <laughs> knives in the shower i mean who doesn't at this point right uh the way times are going justin miller good to have you here justin uh take shoe and slap it out of your hand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. take shoe and slap it out of your hand it's like this uh a history i shouldn't tell this story I'm not going to tell that story uh, only because it's still fresh. But yes, the shoe can be used in a uh, not not only uh, a, as a hand weapon, but in a, also be careful about getting your foot stomped. Uh, but as a uh, projectile weapon, depending you want to you want to use it inside an enclosed room so you can retrieve it. Uh, Bigger Tigger eight twelve. Good to have you here, Bigger Tigger. I'm an older guy with a with a cold steel cane sword. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I too am a, an owner of a cane sword. I'm not sure of my age relative to yours, uh, but that thing is awesome. Is do you have the one that has the um, cutting edge and and the double edge towards the tip, or do you, they had the first ones they made were more like the kind of cane you would carry to the opera in your tuxedo. You know, they're kind of like fancy nightsticks that had long. Um, I think they were triangular and cross section. But for running people through, there was no there was no cutting them up first. Uh, curious which one you have. I, I think both are cool, um, especially the one that I have the 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 sword with the actual sword in it because the cane part is heavy metal and you can have both um, as weapons. Uh, Doug says, Bob, mine is Cane Masters Hickory. Uh, cane Masters Hickory. They make the best quality, in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna have to check that out. Uh, that sounds cool to me. I'd love to have a, a, a nice cane. This old sword says, "I made a cane from ooh, one inch Delrin rod, uh, and purchased fancy ironwood handle. Uh, it's a defense and walks and talk. Uh, uh, it is dense and walks and talks. That sounds great. So Delrin, Delrin like um, uh, super dense uh, glass reinforced nylon." Uh, Something like that, right? Oof, that sounds cool, especially with the wooden handle. Split and Slices says, probably TMI, uh, but one of my nightmares is basically the scene from Indiana Jones. I've got the scimitar. He has the pistol. I know. That's right. And then the cobra bites for insult. Yes, sir. I know. I know. I know. I know. And then and then you have the guy who's going to say, don't come to a, a, a gunfight with a knife. You know, when, of course, the answer is you, you show up with both. Always have both if you can. Uh, Sword says, uh, having been on both sides of the blade, I can honestly say that an impact weapon shuts a person down faster with less chance of a fatality. Uh, ah, yes, 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 yes. That being said, it's still a valid option. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, to me, then, the, uh, yeah, I, I would I would rather, I mean, the knife is so close so close tell a hypothetical story <laughs> yeah it is i'll tell you a hypothetical story right now um uh but you know if you're going to use this against someone it, it's you're here right or or at, at the very most out here for one strike before you're here this is a this weapon and um so yeah impact weapon definitely and you don't know what who you know really no one wants to be in a knife fight. It's 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 horrible. All you got to do to disavow yourself of, of any fascination with it is look up images uh, of the aftermath. It's it's horrifying. Uh, Northern Knives says Promag used to make a carbide tip polymer defense pen called the Archangel. Uh, when they got dis discontinued, I bought out everyone I could find. 
It was a great self-defense tool. That sounds cool. Pro mag. Oh, a carbide tip and polymer. Uh, okay. Oh, that's cool. So you can break through the window, but it's also nice and light. Doug Bowl says, we both have straight wooden and PR24 side handle. Uh, oh, you had both. Uh, actually, the straight was superior and proven more powerful in strikes. I believe that. Uh, to be effective, the side handle requires more training and too complicated. Right. It's karate stuff, right? Um, uh, I could see that. I always thought it looked cool because it protects your arm. It comes out on the elbow and then it comes out on the fist. But I mean, realistically, um, you know, unless you're unless you're Leonardo or whatever the Ninja Turtle is or unless you're very, very trained in karate and, and can can use that yeah, unless I'm wrong, unless I'm mistaken. It seems like that would be awkward in a lot of ways. I, I've seen cool videos of people using the that triangular section, uh, the shorter section to trap people, which I thought is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I'd rather have a straight stick any day, but that's just because that's how I've trained. Uh, I just noticed the base. Good on you. Yes, sir. I got two. Haven't touched them in several months. I, I'm so, what's that? Sine wave with my with most of my things. Uh, Watch and Cut says, guys, for all your self-defense needs, all you need is whatever Lynn Thompson stores next to his Johnson. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Um, I, I held a warm um, uh, explorer when I took a picture with him. He's like, here you go. Hold this. And I was like, sweet. It was warm. This old sword says impact weapon provides uh, instant results. Blades are sometimes felt in delayed sense. I have uh, heard that, uh, but with more lethal results. Yes. Uh, and then you have uh, people who espouse the tomahawk, uh, which is kind of both, you know, uh, especially one like this. This is the, uh, the Hogue Alishowitz, uh EX T01. And it's nice and light, and it's definitely a weapon uh, tomahawk. It's not, you're not breaching anything with this, though, you know, I'm sure to some extent it could handle it. Uh, but yeah, just whack. Um, <laughs> it was warm, lol. Uh, yeah, so uh, you kind of get both here. And man, I, I can imagine if a jury does not look kindly upon uh, man with knife, imagine man with axe. You know, because that's what they see here. Man with axe. They don't see refined gentleman defending himself with a uh, classically inspired um, Alishowitz designed weapon. They see man with axe. What's he doing walking around with an axe? You know, so. All right. All of that being said, let us now get to a pocket check. Ever since I got it, well, a week ago, I've been carrying this thing nonstop. I love it. Why didn't I? I'm always, God, I'm like this. Uh, Kurt Cobain killed himself. I'm like, hey, guys, have you heard of Nirvana? Great band. Check them out. You'll really like them. Knowing your musical taste, they're like, yeah, we've heard of him. Well, have you heard of the Gen 2 LUDT from Microtech? They don't make it anymore, but it's really awesome. I'm here to tell you it's really awesome. Uh, the new one to me uh, leaves me cold. I, I'm not crazy about the new redesign of this knife. I They have done a lot of redesigning, and I've loved everything I've seen except for the LUDT, uh, which made me think, well, I better jump on it. And uh, I thought everyone would have some left over, you know, from. <laughs> but uh, I so all I could find was this purple one. But I love it here. It looks blue next to the blue on your screen. But yeah, let's see. I have something yellowish. That's just paper. Uh, but anyway, it's beautiful purple and uh, it fits in the pocket. Great. It is got this tapered handle. It's got an amazing uh, action to it. It's a great cutter. I love the serrations. I love how the serrations, uh, the peaks of the serrations are actually proud of the blade edge as opposed to uh, making serrated serration cuts into the edge of the blade and having them recessed in here i'm going to turn it down so it focuses and i'm also going to explain by showing so i don't have to use words so you see here on this bird which is a, a, a far less you know expensive knife uh, they had a blade and then they cut into the blade to make those serrations 
um, here they made the serrations and then sharpened the edge so that those, I think, I'm not sure of the exact order of how they did that, but here you have the, um, I just like that setup. You get it. You get it. I don't have to over explain. I don't have to mansplain to you. Uh, so let me explain something else that I like about this knife uh, while I'm explaining. And that is the action. Okay. So, um, of course, this begs the comparison to a ProTech because they are the out the side. They're the out the side guys, right? That's who we think of for out the side automatics. And frequently we think of Microtech for out the front automatics, though. They both do both to varying degrees. I will I will say Microtech does a lot more of both. Um, I think Protech has one out the front, and it was, you know, not not hugely um, distributed or anything like that or made. Uh, so, how does it compare to a Protech? Well, the first thing I thought of was the TR three, TR three. I always forget which TR. That's the TR three. Same size, kind of fluted aluminum handles. Um, just kind of the same sort of knife, tactical knife. So this opens with a really uh, hard um, hit. This also opens up with a hard hit, but it's different. And I've been trying to figure out what it is. Maybe this hits a little bit lighter, but the difference is less about heavy and light and hard and light. It is more like this. This is crunchy. And this is crispy. Both are good. You want both uh, to a certain extent in any snack bar, say. But crispy and crunchy are two different things. And they're both uh, essential qualities in a thing. And that's the only way I can describe the difference between these. Uh, I used to compare Protex to... Um, Protec out the sides to Benchmade out the sides as uh, this, um, what did I say? This snapped open, the other slapped open. The other was kind of like, whoosh, and this was more like, whoosh. but this now feels crispy. This feels crunchy. They're both good. One just has a little more toothsomeness to it, and the other one has a little more zing to it. I don't know. Hard to explain. Just got a yo jumbo, says Kevin Lamb. Kevin, good to have you here, and I want to say, I love that knife. So congratulations. It's a weird thing to congratulate someone for. So let me just say, use it in good health. That's an awesome knife. I hope you love it. Blade Ogre says, carrying the Hinderer XM18 recurve. Love that one. The Clever Girl by CRKT. That's their, um, that's in their Bread for War, Bread for War uh, series. Microtech UTX85, the Sog Trident, the Case Clasp Knife, the Praetorian Swift. Uh, that's the automatic uh, automatic Praetorian. Uh, Baron Sons Freedom Fighting Bowie, cool looking knife. Uh, Emerson Sheepdog Bowie and the Dino Spike and Sleazy Ogre. Two knives of your own design. Anthony said, or first of all, as usual, awesome, awesome carry. Uh, and very complete. Oh, I didn't bring any tissues tonight. So I do have my handkerchief. Anthony uh, says, that looks wonderful. Well, uh, I think, according to Rob Bixby, uh, the Apostle P, according to his nail, uh, his knife sale last week, he was able to find these in a, in a very cool black blade olive drab handle somewhere. So, uh, But that was already a week ago, and who knows? Um, so, Anthony, if you have the, uh, the means and the desire and the timing is right, I highly suggest it. It's all about timing, I have found. All right, so here we have uh, in my pocket, banging around. I love this. Uh, this is a knife that I don't um, put in a slip. This has kicked out the knife that Byron gave me uh, out of my pocket, which has been in my pocket faithfully for about two weeks and uh, went, went today for the um, Cadet, Victorinox Cadet, because... I wanted that screwdriver. I thought I might need that screwdriver today. Um, I did. I used it for a little bit of light prying at work. Worked great. And then uh, ended up using the blade as a bonus at lunch. Uh, so love this knife. I love the cadet. I had lost my first one. Uh, I thought I had it in my dob kit for travel. And it was just 
lost somewhere so i i when i went on my little victorinox kick not that long ago i ended up getting one just in the plain silver i like it in the different anodized colors but i'm not precious i don't need my little fancy colors except for my purple l-u-d-t okay next up in my waistband i had the nova 2 yes this beautiful knife i have fallen 100 percent deeply deeply in love with this uh i showed this off for the first time last week at uh right here let me turn this down one notch for that white that's actually ivory so it's kind of off white here it looks white there we go um it's hard to hard for me to there we go so i've been carrying this a lot loving it uh, carrying it all the time and loving it. it it's also a good pj knife a pajama knife uh, uh you know when you're kicking it at home whatever you wear when you get home uh this is great for that uh gym shorts that kind of thing too uh so uh, full video and information i know i said this last week coming this week coming this coming in these next seven days uh, I've uh, I've worked out the price, but I will give, put all those details. I need to give Jim some stuff for the website, and uh, it'll be good to go. Uh, you can continue if you want a special number. Uh, let me know, um, and we'll we'll see if we go up that high. <laughs> uh, nothing I can't do like three sixty five or anything like that, um, but who knows? Uh, if you like that knife. You'll love the Nova One. You'll love, wait, where is, okay. Anyway, let me show you this. I wasn't carrying this today, but since I have it out, uh, there is the um, Hogtooth Knives. Hogtooth knife, Knives made this design here. And I, you know, I, I did the blade. It's, it's, uh, it's Matt Chase's handle, but this is another one he does. The, this is the Little Ruffian. This is one he has on loan. He's been making the Ruffian for years. This has been one of my favorites since my 51st birthday when I bought it. Um, but this one here is now a mini version of that because so many people like the Ruffian and so many people also like his little pocket fixed blades. He put them together and it makes a great little fixed blade knife. It's awesome. Love this thing. I'm going to do a, a close-up video of this to show it off. I have not carried it. It is not mine, unfortunately. Uh, it'd be cool. Um, it'd be cool if it were, but this is the first one and only. So I got to make a video and get it out post haste. Um, all right. One last knife on me today, uh, besides the ones rattling around in my bag that I didn't even uh, bother with today for emotional support. And I just love this knife. I've been carrying this knife a lot. This is the new Tactile Knives uh, Chupacabra. Chupacabra, the, the mythical question mark creature that sucks blood from various critters down in the south i don't know much about the chubacabra it's definitely not my cryptid of choice uh, i'm a sasquatch man that's what fascinates me uh so uh you know what's your cryptid let me know uh but the chubacabra does make for a damn cool knife the the uh the blade here is the superstar i know i know the lock is the big news uh, the lock is the super lock designed by Snex, a custom knife maker and designer from Malaysia, I believe. And uh, it is a great lock. I love it. I love the fidgetiness of it. It seems to be strong. I've done a little bit of light tapping on the spine. Uh, I don't need it to be that strong because I'm not doing too much with it, but uh, I want it to be strong. And so far it seems to be. Um, but that blade oh my gosh this blade is just gorgeous it it looks like a um well it's just a sheep's foot just an excellent amazing sheep's foot very thinly ground though it's got pretty substantial blade stock um great uh action on the thumb studs there perfect placement it just rockets out this is also an in-house design tactile knife company has been doing a lot of uh uh, collaborations as of late but this is an in-house design so it's cool to see that they have some serious design shops there oh i get it i did i'm missing one of my one of my lights there okay so uh also in reverse grip makes for an excellent reverse grip knife not that you're going to be using this one in reverse grip necessarily at all but um it, it has a great pommel for it i like that that shape 
for this effect right here, locking the thumb over the, the pommel like that. I knew it. I knew it. There is a some sort of bug in here. It landed on my, and now oh, I get obsessive when it comes to, all right. I'm going to start throwing knives at it. That's what's going to happen. It's going to get real, real crazy in here. All right. So that's what I had on me. Would you guys have? Let me know. Anyone carrying a Microtex these days? I know Dave is. Um, Dave Dave has some, uh, a couple of enviable ones. He got that new one with that raw kind of aluminum, um, raw aluminum, what do you call it? Finish. I love that. I think it's very, very handsome. I like it i like that a lot it means a lot to me looks looks on knives looks on knives means a lot uh stephen clayton says remnant Al remnant alliance scourge mini tanto t call knives combatant t call knives warthog ts87 so that is that screwdriver the fln3 uh the guardian wait fln three of them, I, I think, uh, the Guardian, the Night Stalker uh, combat grade, the Piranha, the FMF, I've been liking that FMF, uh, the Accomplice, the MR1, and uh, Reg Blades. It's Reg, what is it? Region? Re Red, Reg Blades? Lovis Pro Colonel Blade. Um, that's the one that looks kind of like a gun, a pistol, right? The Midgard's Messer Mini Axe. Oh, that's cool mini axe uh yeah leave it to a company like midgard's messer to make a mini axe that you can carry around this old sword says carrying a cold steel black talon too serrated oh man after my own heart uh cmb devourer button lock devourer man what a name the devourer <laughs> i have trouble with Double R's in a word like that. Like the name Rory really throws me for a loop. Uh, the CMB Devourer button lock. The Nova one. Again, a man after my own heart. The Vosti Dachshund. Uh, Dachshund. What? I mean, I know what the dog is, but what, what does that one look like? Uh, the Riot PLXT. Oh, that one you got recently. That is cool. That's that one. It's an in-house design also. And it, that's featuring a... a a new lock for them. Bastinelli Gambler. <gasps> I don't know what that is. I think that sounds like it's got to be a push dagger, and it sounds cool because it's Bastinelli. Uh, Best Tech Shodan and the Nightcore EDC 27. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Great carry today, Dave. <clears throat> Enough to vanquish several foes. Uh, Alex says, today's carry was an Emerson CQC7, a fine choice, with the OD Green 50th Anniversary Freedom Flag Scales. That sounds cool. Oh, and a 45 a ACP thumb disc. That's cool. Uh, a We the People clip with a wave. America. Yes, sir. That is a, like the most American uh, knife out there. There was a, um, the SEAL, the Navy SEAL, whose name uh, uh, escapes me, who pulled the trigger on Osama bin Laden was carrying a CQC seven and it sold at auction for, I think $34,000, something like that. Uh, which is, I think that's awesome. Uh, I wonder if he had all the, all the Murica stuff on it, because that's what I thought of when I thought of when I was reading your knife, I was like, man, that needs to be in the pocket of the seal who takes out Osama bin Laden. Uh, five door says McNeese PM two, uh, the little one, three inch one wait what is this mcnees oh oh okay all right uh but pm uh i know what it looks like but i i didn't remember it was called the pm2 uh doug bowls because I, I remember when he went up to 3.5 too uh as well doug bowl says bob i heard years ago that any blade polished to a mirror finish adds in slicing compared to dull finish what's your opinion well i think uh i think the samurai warrior bear that out i think uh all of the polishing so if you watch one of many many videos of people making samurai swords in the traditional way on youtube you'll see that uh polishing is a whole art there's a guy who does everything that's one of those things about their culture that i find amazing is uh in japanese culture everything is done to a level of artfulness and and uh so 
in the process of making a sword, they're polishing guys and they have uh, progressively a finer and finer, finer stones that I think they're rubbing on there. Um, and that is for that purpose. Uh, the high polish, that slick surface glides through your enemy quicker, let's say. Oh, man, now that I saw a bug, everything itches. Ah, I'm in my own head now, man. Uh, splitting slices. What I usually do. This is what this is what happens, and this drives my wife nuts. If a bug gets in the house, uh, I will I will take my bandana or or a um, <laughs> or a uh, dish towel and whip it. I'll just I'll stop. I'll get it out of the air, whoosh, you know. Or especially if it lands. But I don't see him here, and that's not why we're here tonight. Splitting slices says, based on tonight's topic, I no longer carry knives. Carrie is a craftsman. Number uh, one ball peen hammer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Craftsman one number ball peen, I think is what you're saying. Wingard wearables, war club, and a saber stun gun. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. I love hammers. I have uh, uh, also at my desk at work, I have a giant roofing hammer. Uh, I think it's like 23 ounces or something uh, with the knurled uh, hammer pole. Um uh, which is great. And and I, I wish I could get smaller hammers with that knurled hammer pull. I like it because it sticks to what you're hitting. You know, if you hit someone with a, well, this, this is, let, let's put it this way. That's how they did war hammers back in the day. So that when you were hitting a helmet, it didn't glance off. It bit into the helmet with those little, with the, with the knurling texture and all of the force went, into the target as opposed to glancing off and then losing energy and all that. Um, so I know, but like regular hammers aren't made for that. Roofing hammers have that. Uh, I've never done any roofing, but I, I know that much. And those are tend to be much larger and heavier, <clears throat> but I would like to have some knurling on the hammer pole in my hammer in the car. Uh, Anthony says, I got my buck 110 back out a few days ago very nice the basic one with ebony oh that's nice with ebony i have I, th I have the basic walmart from a couple of years ago and it was uh diamond wood diamond wood like this no ebony so i i don't think yours is so basic well this is a 112 but my 112 and my 110 are the same love that knife and classics man and they're not that heavy if you if you're willing to wear the the sheath on your belt. And I say, man, if you're willing to wear a phone on your belt, you should be willing to wear a knife on your belt. Just saying. Uh, I, I do not. I never carry a phone on my belt. I rarely sometimes have a knife on my belt. Uh, Split and Slices says, the saber stun gun is black in color, not per, per, per violet. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> thank you sir thank you for maintaining my manliness by using violet uh the unfortunate color of that l-u-d-t gen 2 hey man i just i'm just looking to bring people together and purple as we know is a color of togetherness just look at every politician's tie who's trying to cross a chasm uh, Five Doors says the Nova 2 looks fantastic. I'll be in on that for, for sure. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. I didn't want anyone to have to see that. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Just it came, literally came up right in my grill, and I thought I could kill it. But I swear, uh, they're getting quicker. That was a gnat. That was a gnat. I thought it was a mosquito. That's cool. All right. Too much. Uh, are you wearing an Arnie Seiko, Bob? Yes, I am. I am wearing an Arnie Seiko. Uh, this was my birthday present from my wife last year, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to show it right here. I I just recently took the very nice four rubber rubber strap off. Uh, just kind of wasn't doing it for me, and it was too grabby on the hair on my wrist and all of that. And and so I just got a NATO. Let's see, get that up there. Got a NATO strap, and um, I really like it on this. And what I like about NATO straps is that if one of the pins, sometimes when I think about how small these pins are, actually, the pins on this watch are actually quite beefy, but mostly on watches, the pins are small. And I always think about what if one of, one of them gives way? If you don't have a strap like that, you lose your watch. Uh, but if one of the pins gives way on this, 
you, you'll have a watch that's flapping around until you can secure it, but you don't lose the whole time, the whole time piece. I'm going to call it a time piece. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I really like the NATO bands and there's, and they breathe better and they don't pinch the hair. I do like metal bracelets the way they look on other people. Uh, but on me, they tend to bother me after a while. Will B said, uh, good eye there, Alex, by the way. He's like, it's not a good eye. It's what I do, man. You're wearing, and you're also wearing like one of the biggest watches <laughs> that's acceptable to wear. It is pretty big, but really. And I, I have pretty thin wrists and it does not, I don't think it's too big for my wrist. But maybe that's just because I want to believe uh will B says grimsmo norseman uh that's what i was getting at before i was gonna say grimsmo norseman but i don't want to typecast you man you do that yourself no i'm just kidding grimsmo norseman that is a classic uh microtech this is a deep cut too. the doc death on command which i always thought was an unwise uh name but a very cool knife that was a uh a collaboration between anthony marfione and um and Mick Strider, Strider Knives, and that thing was cool. Very cool knife. Uh, Riot Horizon C, that's a good one, too. That was my first Riot and probably my first. That was an early expensive knife for me, the Horizon C, right? The one with all the milling, and it's it's, it's almost four inches. Uh, the Concept Preta 2 Titanium, that's a fine one. Uh, the Benchmade Rift Migron Valona Max Ace Neptune. I need to get my hands on one of those. The Wee Stonefish, likewise, I love that that knife. And the Olight Baton Three Karis Bolt V2, and added the Tikel Sapper. Oh, dude. Okay, you wait till the end to pull out the Sapper. That's that's the one that got away. I mean, perpetually the one that got away. <laughs> Watch and cut says Jesus. How many knives do you guys carry? at once <coughs> we have a couple here alex who solidly carry 10 and i i will carry a lot uh you know three on my person is a is a lot to a lot of people uh but i also carry a bag with me and so i always have some goodies in there uh not only just in case but just in case shane how you doing edgy american good evening guys itp para 3 and manix xl what's itp itp a uh, special version of of the para 3 i guess have a knife day have a knife day says remember to hit that thumbs up thank you sir i appreciate that hit the thumbs up as the man says and look got it got it i'm not buying you a beer and you know what i will have it in my pocket at blade show too have a knife day sent me this challenge coin uh, quite some time ago with a couple of t-shirts and some other cool stuff uh Check out his channel if you have not already, but I'm sure you already have. Uh, Northern Knives says, today I have on me the Microtech Annex. That's a cool one. That's the, the second one uh, done by Reich. The Tactile Turn Zerk Pen. Cur colorful Filth Northern Knives Spidey Chef. Uh, the new Chavez Scapegoat. And of course, the Marfione Custom Tactical Beard Comb. <laughs> love that the most expensive comb in the universe that is cool i mean that is a serious flex i mean for guys who own knife company uh knife purveyors and uh, such as yourself that is a um that's kind of the thing that you pull out i would imagine at blade show and you're like what do you have in your pocket you pull that thing out and your fellow purveyors have to pull out something equally as cool and hard to get uh, Thomas Farkas, good to have you here, Thomas. Uh, today, uh, carrying my micro, I added today for some reason, but uh, carrying my Microtech Combat Troodon Gen 3 10, just ordered my second Gen 3 in natural clear. Oh, my favorite finish. Uh, I, I really want to get a Troodon Gen 3. Um, I also like the Cypher. That is cool. Where, where has that been uh, my whole life? The Cypher, that's a really cool knife. Uh, and then, of course, that one's coming out with the uh, with the no wiggle. And then there's the Hera. I like the Hera uh, a lot, too. So I, I got some some catch up to do. Uh, just ordered my second Gen 3 in natural clear. My favorite finish. Now I have a SOCOM and combat Troodon Gen 3 in that finish. That's cool. That So that's the one that I was talking about that Dave just got recently. 
So cool. Hoosier Hippie in my pocket is Compliance Edge DSK. We have a lot of class here tonight and a henchman uh, and fingernail clippers. Uh, the DSK and the henchman, I, I believe Dave has both of those also. I love Compliance Edge. I've never even laid hands on one of his knives. I have to get the DSK. If that's the one I'm thinking of with the with the thumb plate on the on the pommel, I love that knife. I mean, it comes that way or with a ring, but I would get it with the straight plate i have to get that knife well i don't know what what i'm waiting for rob o'neill says alex is the seal uh that claims to have killed bin laden uh, it's coming out that he may not have been the guy after all at least that's what's coming out lately that's interesting you know it's funny because um i have uh some friends of the era who were active duty and saw like lots of combat who were of an era where where uh, they didn't or maybe weren't allowed to or whatever. They just didn't talk about it. Um, and not that anyone I know was on any raids to kill bin Laden. But my point is, like, you can't you can't coax a war story out of uh, several of the guys I know. So I, it, it seems like a different uh, like a, a change in culture uh, a little bit. And, and maybe also uh, seals are so illustri illustrious, illustrious, um, that people are, you know, aching to hear those stories. I love those stories and people want to hear them. Uh, Doug Bowles says, Bob, get your chopsticks. Yes. Yes. I do need to get those chopsticks. I do need to get those, uh, the, uh, tactical chopsticks from station nine splitting slices says I need to get your salt crystal pump rifle for those bugs flies, Bob. Yes. Need to get you at the, yes, yes, you do. Uh, much more fun than rubber band or swatter salt crystal pump rifle that sounds awesome so when i was a kid and we used to sneak into the uh golf course and we had to go through several uh yards uh from adjacent neighborhoods there was a uh, you know apparently and this this was i i think made up by my friend's older brother uh but apparently uh there was an old lady with a shotgun full full of rock salt who would shoot you if, if she caught you in her backyard uh, i don't think that happened but i do know she had a scary dog Ryan Vest says, howdy, folks. Well, Ryan, howdy to you, sir. I've been gabbing for an hour straight. Haven't done all the stuff I have on my list here, but uh, we got to get to this gentleman junkie knife giveaway at some point soon. That NATO looks sick. Thank you. You know, this NATO uh, Amazon um, and uh, uh, it was inexpensive, like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. Edgy American. I miss my DOC. Kind of. Uh, I all I remember about that knife, I, I remember watching Jim Skelton's review of that, and he he called it an fu clip because the clip rose up so high that it was painful for him to grip onto uh, real tight. But uh, you know that was before Jim was making knives. Maybe his hands were still tender from selling watches. He used to be a watch uh, in the watch business uh, on TV. Um, so. Uh, so maybe maybe now he, he wouldn't mind that clip. Who knows? Uh, watch and Cut says, that's awesome. That's a great watch. Thank you. I love it and have the same one I bought from Dirk years ago. I, I'm i curious, uh, and uh, if it's a personal question, you don't have to answer it, but how many watches do you have? Because I'm trying to figure out what's reasonable. Uh, right now, I'm not in a watch phase, but man, it's easy to see myself going there. And I love, I love this watch. Um, I was a big fan of his movies back then. And, and you remember in Commando, he wore this watch, but they kind of changed the face a little bit to make it look more tactical, which is crazy because it's already pretty damn tactical. But I think they uh, they put some two big dials on it and and a big digital window. So, um, yeah, such a great movie. Cheeto Morita, good to have you here. Yo, peoples. Yo, to you sir uh if if you're who i think you are i've been watching your videos edgy american says itp in the pocket oh <laughs> thank you i'm like itp that's got to be some aftermarket company okay itp in the pocket like it you're younger you're younger in spirit than i sir i think you and i are the same age though uh spartan aster that's a cool knife that's the one uh was that the one designed by oh, Les George or is that the one designed by? Uh, yeah, that was the Les George one. Spartan Aster, the GEC 71 and fresh off the boat Serrano prototype. What's this? Oh, fresh off the floor Serrano prototype. 
Serrano, Serrano. What is that? Is what is that? Serrano. Is that um what is that? Tell me what that is or who that is and why it sounds familiar. Because information gets pushed out pushed out of the brain when new information comes in. Craig Vincent says carried cold steel 8010, 8015 light, serrated XL Voyager Tonto, the Mayhem Range Boss. Lucky two slip joint. I got this in my pocket. Spider Co. Mannix two lightweight resilience rough rider doctor's knife. Oh, rough rider doctor's knife in smooth tobacco. Oh yeah, yeah. And that one doesn't have the paddle, right? It's got like a something else. This is a pretty pretty excellent carry. Silent professionals says Jerry C. Jerry, good to see you, sir. By the way, silent professionals. Now. Okay, I don't know exactly what you're saying, but when I was a kid, my brother used to get, he used to sneak Soldier of Fortune. You know, my mom freaked out when she would see Soldier of Fortune. Uh, but there was something called, there. I remember something, Silent Professionals. I remember my brother saying it, like me being like, wow, what's that mean? That's so cool. Uh, and there'd be like a silhouette of a guy coming out of the water or something. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, Josh says, Josh 33025 says, Leatherman P4 and the Kubi Tidious. I don't know that one, uh, but Kubi makes awesome knives. Kubi is my uh, travel to blade show if I'm going on a plane, which is what I usually do, uh, knife, because it's, it's so good that if it's the only knife in my pocket all weekend, I mean, which it won't be at blade show, but if it's, if it's all I have to carry, I'm, I'm totally happy with it, uh, but if it got stolen by TSA, I wouldn't be heartbroken. So Kubi makes some fantastic knives. Uh, I love the Kubi Flash, by the way. That's the one I'm talking about. What a great knife. Uh, Will B says, Jim hates being reminded he used to sell watches on Shop NBC or whatever it was. Well, why? Why Why hate that? That's part of your story, man. That I think that's awesome. I used to work in the fashion industry, uh, not making stuff, but editing video and 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 interviewing fashion designers at, at shows it was fun it was cool and i learned a lot and a lot of stuff i bet a lot of the stuff that he learned in watches translates to knives just like a lot of the stuff i learned in fashion translates to fashion translates to everything because everything comes and goes in fashion uh in one fashion or another and uh so anyway you know what i mean everything that you do in your life adds up to where you are right now and makes you who you are now I'm getting philosophical. So he shouldn't be ashamed of that. I think it's damn cool. Uh, Dion Page says, uh, and by the way, Shop NBC, I'm open to selling watches on your TV channel. Uh, Dion Page says, hello, King Junkies, Jim and Knife Junkies worldwide. Dion Page, it's good to have you here, sir. Um, Watch and Cut says, I have 85 watches and it's not a face. It's a <laughs> it's not a face. It's a thank you. Thank you. Okay, I know. Oh my god, I'm gonna run out on a rail here. It's not a face, it's a dial. Of course, it's a dial. It's a dial. Watch face. Well, what's a face when people say watch face? Or is that just like is that just showing you're a rube if you say watch face? Uh Cheeto Marita says, uh, LOL, I designed it, Bob. God bless made it. Wait, wait. Oh, Donald Bless made it for me in his shop. How cool. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, 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 oh. I think I've seen this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we got to call that back up. I got to see that. Um, sharpened swedge. Ooh. Ooh, you're singing, singing my song here. I'm going to make sure I look this back up. Serrano. Okay. Oh, that's awesome, man. We need more sharpened swedges, uh, so you know you have my full backing. Uh, Miguel Meyertenez. Miguel Meyertenez. Good to have you here, Miguel. Uh, just bought the, I can never pronounce this, Asocalypse. 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 Asocalypse, like assault, but calypse. Okay. Just bought the Assault Calypse 5.5 fixed blade M390. And the anomaly Pical, I love that knife uh, from Bastinelli. Loving them both. So I have the the anomaly, and I have it with his uh, Sukamaki cord wrap on it in maroon, and it's beautiful. And I love that knife. The Asakopolis is what? That is a 
that is a microtech fixed blade right is that a microtech fixed blade pretty sure it is and it's got jimping going all the way around the handle am i right uh 85 watches i have 38 and regularly take shit from friends about that well uh you can get more if you start a watch channel and then you have that, you know, you, you can write them off or whatever you do. Uh, how, I mean, that's a great, that's how I justify these knives. Not that I write them off to the IRS, but, but, uh, I get, I, you know, I can justify them because I have a channel. Uh, Mark says, Hey Mark, good to have you here, Mark. Uh, anyone, any, uh, anyone have any experience with something of obsc something obscene? Uh, I have had, I am not a, an expert, uh, but I had a something obscene company knife here uh, on loan to me from, uh, I had one on loan from, uh, uh, from Hero Sticks. Awesome knife. And it's the one, now I'm forgetting what it's called with the lightning clip. It's the one that really, that put them on the map. It was probably their first knife. And they, they reiterate it frequently. Hollow ground, clip point. Amazing. And I have, uh, well, no, no, I have a knife that was kind of co-designed um, or, or helped on by uh, obscene, something obscene company that was done uh, with Arcane. Uh, so awesome is what I would say. And and I'm pretty sure he at one point was using Riot. I know that the knife that I had on loan was Riot. And so great build and amazing, amazing ergonomics. And just great cutting, very thin geometry on the blade, I remember. I mean, I would, from my one impression of that knife, I would say go for it. Uh, Bob, you're going to love the Serrano, that Cheeto design. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it, especially with the sharpened wedge. Mark with the ten dollar check. Thank you. That is awesome, sir. I thank you, huh? For that, I have out. I have out my favorite. My favorite knife, probably. Uh, made by Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. Uh, you got stag. You got uh, re reused um, or upcycled uh, wrought iron from a bridge in boston you've got my carta and then you have 15 and 20 and 1095 blade steel gonna put this under the knife cam uh this is my favorite fixed blade pattern of all time the bob loveless uh sub hilt fighter i just love them it, it incorporates so many things that i love uh i.e two fully sharpened edges a clip point shape so I love that it's got the it's got the the asymmetrical fighter thing. I'm really into much. I love daggers, but I much prefer an asymmetrical fighter like this, uh, just because. Uh, and I also think that, uh, frankly, that this straight part is very useful. Um, but also, just look at that steel. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. Damascus here. Those two steels. And I just love this knife. So if I ever got called out in a duel and I had to go protect the family honor and such, uh, this is what I would take if it were a knife duel. Uh, if it were a gun duel, I would take this too. I would just have it in my hip for good luck or, you know, in case the single shot didn't work. All right. I salute you, Mark. And I thank you very much for that very generous super chat, sir. Here's to you. And as a bonus, the sheath on this is just as purdy look at that looks like a corset mm -mm -mm. leather corset nothing wrong with a leather uh corset all right let me put this in there probably the worst way to sheath a knife is like right into your chest but i assured that it was in the sheath before i pushed so uh do as i say not as i do as my dad used to say uh, Jerry C says, uh, it's in reference to your buds that don't give D. Oh, 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 uh, oh, okay. On their actions, SOPs, etc. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Pat these nuts, uh, 14 watches will be my cutoff. That's how many displays hold only four slots left to fill. Oh man. You know what I'd like to get like an old Rolex would be, would be cool. Um, I would like to have an old Rolex, but there's so many other cool uh, cool watches out there too. But there's something about Rolexes, and I don't mean that old. Like I want, I, I guess, like a Submariner. What I really want is a Daytona. Uh, but 
I guess I just don't really want them. I love the way they look. I love the way they look. And then I have a Pagani that uh, basically I'm ashamed to wear, but I just have it so I can look at it and wear it sometimes when I'm around people who don't know watches. And it's a, uh, it looks like a Rolex Air King, which is just such a beautiful, simple design. It's so gorgeous. And they're so well made and all that, all that. You don't need me to sell Rolexes to you. You don't need me to justify why I would love to have one. Uh, but I just don't ever see that happening. Uh, Loyal Group says, evening, gents. I'm late again. Loyal Group, it's always good to have you here. So I'm glad you made it. Uh, Doug Bowl says, Bob, my great-grandfather's 180s real... Wait. Uh, Bob, my great grandfather's 180s real gold pocket watch handed down and made in Bloomfield, Iowa. It still runs and keeps good time. How amazing is that? That is so cool. So a, a very old and still working. And it's just springs and levers and gears. It's amazing. That's the only time I say levers, by the way. I say levers of power. I say Give me a lever long enough and I can move the world. I don't say lever, but for some reason with watches, it seems appropriate uh, because right under that watch dial are levers, springs, and gears. Now, what's under the watch face? We don't know because we haven't found it yet. Mark Ridgewell says, what's up, fellas? Mark, how's it going, man? Good to have you here with us. Uh, we're chatting. I'm trying to get to this knife giveaway. Let me do this here. Pat D's Nuts says, I sold women's shoes. That's how I know they're crazy. <laughs> oh, man. That could, that could be an interesting job, man. And you, I would imagine that it attracts all types uh, selling women's shoes, uh, especially the types that like women's feet. I'm betting. Uh, Dion Page says, it's a clock face watch dial. Alex, does that pass the, the, the smell test? Yes, it's not a face at all. It's a dial. I say face sometimes too. Okay, but okay, does, uh, uh, does Dion's rule that face is for a clock like on the wall, but dial is for... So, wristwatch that makes sense to me uh edgy american says i ruined the debut of the serrano sorry again Cheeto. no you didn't he he did <laughs> cheeto did lol ruined it or made it better oh dude no no i thought cheeto brought it up first but anyway i'm excited to see it man uh when when do we get to see it is it something that's uh well anyway you'll let me know I'm I'm talking to you like you can answer me right back. Craig Vincent says, Kubi Tidious is one of my favorite knives. The bad news is I gave my only one away a few weeks ago. The good is, one, it was to an attractive female, and two, I shop for another one. Now I shop for another one. Cool. It's uh, always good to give, you know, yeah. Uh, the Asocalypse, pretty sure the spelling is wrong. Is a Bastinelli. That's what it is. We've been through this. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm sure uh, Dave rolled his eyes minutes ago. I remember now. The, uh, the Asocalypse is the one that's, uh, it looks like a sax. I love that. I want that one. I want it. I want it in my collection. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember now. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Watch and Cut says, I'm still more of a knife reviewer, uh, but I added watches in the last couple of years. I added a small amount of firearms this year, too. Not all those watches are keepers. I'm curious, uh, Alex, has the adding the firearms changed your monetization or your, I don't know, are they doing weird things with you with gun? Uh, if you have uh, firearms on there? Joseph S., nice to have you here, Joseph, with your crossed knives. Love it. All right, let's give this knife away before I forget altogether. That wouldn't be crazy out of hand. Mark Ridgewell says, I think you would dig regiment blades. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what the reg is, regiment. All right. So here it is. Uh, I'll show you this. This is a uh, nice bench top sharpener. Diamond sharpening grits include 300, 600, 800, and, and 1,000 grit size. Adjustable sharpening stone to... 15 to 30 degree angles uh, in a fixed angle sort of system thing. Uh, weighted base, no slip feet, non-marring grip, ambidextrous clamp. So uh, a great sharpening system. This was donated to the channel by Dave. Not even opened. I was going to open it to check it out, and I 
looked at both things and and so brand new to you brand new period and then here sorry sorry jim and then here also with it so that you can practice once this dulls which uh this is d2 this is uh 14 c 28 n i think i mean really if you look at it without a, a magnifying glass and you can read it i don't believe you uh it looks like a a hair clip it looks like a little ginger hair clipping like from a beard uh that's that's how small they 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 put it but it's long enough that i think it's 14 c 28 n <laughs> all right so there you go or you could look it up savivi stony dogfish also donated to the channel by the very generous and gentlemanly as well as deadly dave this old sword blade reviews okay let us let us uh read off the names of our uh of our uh patrons and then we'll get going before I read off the gentlemen junkies, I would like to give a shout out to the tactical junkies and the traditional junkies out there. Uh, tactical junkie is the uh, is Christopher Brocious and James Moore. James is with us here this very, very evening. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciated. And then the traditional junkies are Cliff Scott and Tony 42 Rivers. I love that name. Tony 42 Rivers right here. I love it. Okay, uh, thank you guys. Uh, greatly appreciate it. And now to the gentlemen junkies, Five Door also here. Oh, so a lot of you are here, so I uh, thank you one and all. Five Door, Ben Belkin, Byron Kennedy, Caleb Townsend, Cam Michael, Colin Maison, Pierre, Edwin Callow, Gavin Kalaitis, Jay McConnell, Jesse Tellis, Jock's Knife, JVF, Martin Gamboa, Mr. VC256, Never Enough Dives 007, Excuse me, Scott Nelson, Sean Curry, Shane Miller, Stephen Michael Robert, Tony Kim, V2, Northern Knives, and Will B. All right. Are you all ready? Are you all ready? This Civivi and this sharpening system is going to one of you proud gentlemen. In three, two, and one. Let's spin it. All right, it's spinning. If you're listening, listening only, it's spinning. Let me assure you, and it will, it will stop. It, it, it'll lead us down uh, a false. Savivi, <laughs> spiny dogfish is yours, along with the uh, fixed angle sharpener system from Cold Steel. Thank you so much for your support. These, of course, are just small tokens of my appreciation, of our appreciation, mine and Jim. Um, they do not in any way uh, equal your input, but it's a small gesture. So thank you very much. It's it's greatly appreciated. Gavin Kalaitis, I'm writing your name down right here. Today I have paper in front of me instead of writing on my computer. This old thing, my gosh. It's survived a lot, I got to say. Kalaitis. All right, Gavin, uh, please send me your address uh, via the knife junkie at gmail.com thank you very much sir uh, northern knife says i tell people who buy karambits for defense to be careful about it you don't want to show a knife designed to take people apart at the joints to a jury you can argue pocket knife that's a weapon yes 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 i know i know that's why i have a problem with say the kaiser assassin such a stupid name if you don't mind my saying so uh for a knife i mean especially a non assassin knife okay if you if you have an obviously uh you know if you were to call this the assassin i'd say okay another asymmetrical fighter i love this thing this is the tops um express by lacy zabo uh but if you were to pull this out and say uh you know oh sh shoot it! lost my train of thought. Sorry, I almost put that in the wrong way, and I cannot stand when people do that. But uh, you get the idea. Watch and Cut says, only with those videos specifically, limited monetization, and I'm aware of that. Okay, I wasn't sure how that worked, because I hear some people say pew pew instead of gun, and I'm like, is that is that so that they don't get dinged? Um, and I, I would imagine that that is, because... You know, we cannot talk about these kind of things. All right. I, I, what I do want to talk about is um, something uh, that Mike just brought up. Uh, he's talking about carrying a karambit 
for self-defense. Obviously, that knife is uh, a CM. I won, he says. Oh, okay. So are you? Okay, awesome. Send me your address. And uh, uh, Mr. Gavin Kalaitis, and let me know uh, where you live. Edgy American says, Bob, you should enable membership gifting. I should. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking for Gavin Kalaitis CM. If you're not Gavin Kalaitis. It'll be bad. Uh, Jacob Green, good to have you here, Jacob. In Hapkido, we train to use the cane as a weapon. Try being the TSA agent that confiscates a walking cane. Yes, no kidding. Hapkido is cool. That was the first martial art my wife took. And uh, there's a Hapkido dojang, I think it's called, around the corner from here. And when I see the black belts and the advanced uh, people train, I've seen it. It uh, I have seen it look to me like a combination of like, I don't know. There was like a lot of throw. They looked like kind of Japanese jujitsu. It was cool. It was a cool looking art. Anyway, I'd like to know more about Hapkido. Uh, but we were talking about defense and carrying a Quran. But here's a knife that is from a new company, Fisher Blades. Uh, Fisher Blades is the brainchild of Chaz Fisher, uh, who was on this show, a former executive at Boker Knives who uh, a marketing uh, executive who knows a lot about knives and also knife combatives um, teamed up with his brother who has been in Montana making uh, outdoors knives and, and the like for years and um, expanded the, the Fisher blades lineup. And so brothers are now working together and created Fisher blades. And this is a new knife uh, from their kind of their first knife working together they're still offering the the knives from um the other catalog which are just kind of outdoors they're i don't i don't mean to say they're just but they're they're very nice looking outdoors knives but they're definitely not knives like this uh, this is their first one it's called the beckwith covert and if you know uh colonel charles i think was his first name beckwith he's the guy who started delta force and um uh, he's a famed a famed military man and um since this knife uh is named after beckwith for a reason and that's because this is not a pocket edc knife uh fisher blades is very clear in stating that this is a weapon this is for you on you for self-defense this is not an edc knife for cutting your sandwich this is not for uh slicing cardboard or whatever else you do with your blade this is for keeping sharp and shivin enemies and i love the philosophy you know i love the philosophy behind that uh, but i've been carrying this quite a bit and i have found that despite uh <laughs> despite whatever they're trying here uh this would make a great self-defense knife no doubt uh, but it also does make an excellent edc knife unfortunately sorry guys <laughs> you've done both uh yeah this is a would make an excellent self-defense uh, weapon but i will tell you right now it makes a great uh edc kind of do everything knife um the sheath what makes it tactical you say bob well the sheath uh, i have one in in regular standard right hand and then there's one that's like this with the clip mounted on this side and uh, chaz was kind enough to send me both uh, this knife uh, this was sent to me by the company they are now on sale uh, you probably may have seen uh, tomas alas's video of this uh, knife uh, but so this sits down in your pocket so your pocket seam is right here and that much uh, protrudes from your pocket and you have this quillion here uh, on the pommel on the uh, finger side of the pommel and then you have this uh, little hump here and both of those are just to aid in drawing the knife and uh, the drawing period being the most critical or <laughs> I don't know if the most is an adequate is the right way of putting it but you can't fight with your knife if you can't draw your knife. So it's very, very important uh, that you have great purchase on that knife when you're tugging it out of your pocket. Now, he intends it, uh, he being Chaz Fisher, the designer, intends this to be uh, carried like this if you're righty and then like this if you're lefty in your left pocket uh, so that it's drawn in the standard grip. But I like also to carry this in my right, in my left pocket and use it in reverse grip and then and likewise with the other sheath 
in my right pocket uh, because I like to carry my fixed blade knives tip down and edge forward just because that's how I like to. Uh, it works very well like that also. So this, you might be saying, this reminds me of another knife I've seen. And yeah, it it does. It looks like, it doesn't look like, but it's, it's in a similar spirit to this knife here, the um, Amtac Northman. This was a knife that was gifted to me by my father, and uh, it's really cool. It's a knife that was uh, outside of my range, uh, price range for what it is. So, uh, but my dad was uh, really gung ho about getting me and my brother one. And who was I to dampen my father's mood on the on the subject? So I said, "Yeah, make mine the serrated one," <laughs> uh, and it is awesome. I love it. It, it's probably a little bit small if you got big meat meat hooks, but for my medium-sized hand, it's great. They have an XL version or a large version. Uh, but yeah, same sort of uh, situation where it's definitely to fit in the pocket. Um, this is not good in the waistband, um, even though it's got the the mounted discrete uh, con discrete carry concepts clips. Um, it's mounted so low that you will, with the curve and tightness of your waistband, you will cut into your pants as you draw it because you also want to draw it with the, with the edge away. And if you do that, you are going to contact your pants. So this is definitely, these are definitely in the pocket knives. And despite what you might think, they're very easy to resheathe if you, um, if you simply follow with the blade follow down the clip into your pocket it always lands right in the right spot same with this knife um so uh also similar to similar in size to a tkel knives uh here it's the mr1 i meant to pull out my uh my night stalker but kind of a similar you know similar size profile it's a little bit smaller or not profile but similar carry profile uh the the night stalker is a little bit bigger uh, in this case, the MR1, uh, but similar in, in in the kind of use you're carrying it. Yes, you can do lots of stuff with it, but you're really carrying it for self defense. A lot of a lot of guys talk about carrying um, one knife for self defense uh, that they never touch, that they keep sharp, they keep clean, and I totally get that. I totally and 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 I'm like, yeah, guys who say that are guys who actually use knives because the other knives in their pockets are actually dulling because they're using them and they're getting them dirty because they're using them. And that's not me because I heard uh, Scab mention that in a short video uh, today, Choir Boys Cutlery. And I thought to myself, all my knives are clean and sharp. And then I was like, yeah, but look at him. He's he's using them and he puts videos up of him using them. I'm, I'm taking care of them. Uh, Northern Knives. I met Lacey at SHOT Show some years ago. Very nice guy. Uh, talked for a while. Generous with his time very cool designs to Lacey Zabo. He was a former Marine and then, oh, he actually did, did his version of the Marine Corps fighting knife, the K bar for tops. That's very cool. Uh, but he was a Marine and law enforcement. And I think trained a lot in uh Kali, maybe that's cool that you met him and got a chance to, to talk with him. Jacob Green says it's a combination of BJJ and karate. Okay. All right. The BJJ, I didn't know, but that, 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 uh, you know, obviously it, it's getting incorporated into every, everything that considers fighting in all the different ranges, let's say. Uh, Loyal Group says, I think that's because Aikido and Hapkido are normally combined in many cases. I've heard people say Hapkido is Korean Aikido, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's wrong. <laughs> uh cm need one need one yes need one yes you do this is a pretty damn cool knife i gotta say uh and by the way it fits great in hand um so i was talking to Chaz on the phone uh he wanted to tell me a little bit about the design so let me tell you a little bit about this right here so uh and what i'm talking about is that thumb ramp that was inspired by the delica believe it or not even though this is not an edc knife uh because that pushes the blade kind of down especially uh, given this uh arcing this angular thumb swell if you're, you're pushing it down creating uh and then this uh straight edge is angled downward putting the secondary point at a low point making it 
Um, I I think pretty nasty in a slash if what it does on on paper is any indication. Sometimes I'll hang paper in a doorway and then see how uh, how close, how lightly all these different things it would take to make a cut just in the paper using the tip, using the secondary tip. This is good with percussive, uh, like that kind of cut. Uh, though this is such a small blade, you're not going to be doing that. This you want to hold on to tight, tightly, tightly, tightly. Uh, how do you hold your knife? Tightly is the answer. Uh, Loyal Group says, very nice. It definitely has a ramp for a saber grip. Definitely. And then uh, excellent um, guard here. Stop your hand from running up on the um, on the blade, which is a problem that has come up, uh, which came up in Chaz Fisher's uh, own experience in using, I can't remember what knife he was saying, a uh, great knife, uh, but he was using it on a, on a pig in one of those dynamic biological testing scenarios, a swinging pig, and you're stabbing it to see what it's like to stab uh, something approximating uh, a human adversary in motion. And he, uh, with the knife he was using, he slipped. There wasn't an adequate um, guard. Slipped up and, and cut cut a finger to the bone, and uh, decided he wanted to have a guard on here. So the guard and the quillion on the pommel uh, really bracket in nicely. Um, yeah, he's calling this a quillion back here. I always think of quillions as the guards up front because that's how it is on swords. But uh, that's that's cool for this too. That's a good way to good thing to call it. Doug Bull says, Bob, the late Tom Laughlin, oh, Billy Jack, uh, used Korean Hapkido in his movies. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I saw Billy Jack years ago, and I, I didn't know it was going to be such a hippie fest, uh, but I, <laughs> I shouldn't put it that way. Uh, it was the, you know, his style, but I loved his, his, uh, I don't know, his fight for the fight for the little guy. That's, I like that. As I'm sure most of us do. Uh, slab slice, chopstick, slash hack that button, says Dion. Never, never were wiser words said. I agree with that. Do that, do that. So, yeah, uh, go check this out. Now, uh, Chaz is going to come back on the show now that he's no longer with Boker, and we're going to talk all about uh, Fisher Blades and how Fisher Blades came to be. Uh, design, business model, all that stuff. We'll get into it, as we usually do on the show. Doug Bull says, Bob, the main advantage of reverse grip edge forward is power in stabbing, even when hitting bone. Uh, power in, well, but you still have power in stabbing with the edge in. There's no, as a matter of fact, I, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking these days that uh, even if you're not doing any, any of that uh, Pical stuff, uh, if you're just coming straight down uh, with the edge in, just given the arc of your, of your arm, you're, especially with a knife like this, or uh, you're going to be uh, not only thrusting in, but like that motion will also be a cutting motion because you're going to be pulling kind of down because of the motion of the arm. So anyway, I don't mean to, to nerd out and be, be silly. I, I hear what you're, what you're saying that definitely the point of the tip down is to get that strength behind, uh, behind the, the thrust. Loyal group. Uh, if I remember correctly, Scab has recently ran his hand up on a blade. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Earning a few stitches, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're right. I don't remember what the blade was. He's one of my favorite channels. I love watching his show. And I love his uh, his no BS attitude. And also, uh, he was born the same year I was born. So there's always a kinship with people who, who you know, uh, who get every reference, you know. Um, so well, let me show you work. God, I've been gabbing so much, man. I, I have not shown either of these two knives. So I want to show you uh, the knives that Craig sent me. Um, he reached out, Craig Vincent reached out to me and said, I want to send you a knife uh, or if you want to trade, let's trade. And I said, let's trade. And so, but the knife that he is offering, it was the exciting part. Uh, no, I mean, actually uh, dealing with Greg, uh, with Craig and, and doing a trade was also exciting. He's a very nice guy and a great writer. Um, but this is the Twist Master Medium from Cold Steel. I don't remember if they did a small. I know they did a larger one. Um, but it, it wouldn't be crazier for Cold Steel to start at medium because we don't do anything small. Um, but here it is. Oh, such a cool clip point folder. 
in this sort of a uh, grivery handle but here it is it's a twist lock just like the open l here's a, a number eight now the open l uh you can twist either way due to the sh that uh the cutouts there so you just rotate that it interrupts the path of the blade and here's the tactical version and i love it it's so cool it's got these little studs for grip and uh it's really strong well when it's locked up when it's locked up it's really strong i mean no wiggle at all it's got a great shaped blade i love that super belly uh bellied blade but the way it's positioned um the way it it reaches downward to about here means all this space back here is going to be doing a lot of great uh, cutting on a slash and just i mean not that you're slashing with this but you are maybe maybe you're, this is your uh maybe this is your work around the yard or work around the ranch or farm knife and uh, uh well if it is you're you're working with something that's out of print but my point is uh, you can pull this out use it and and slash it quite a lot of uh you know netting webbing rope uh, that kind of thing uh, twine and this thing would be great. Very thin shearing power uh, from this SK5 carbon blade. I think it's like, I think it's carbon steel, SK5. Uh, but yeah, I love it. I'm so happy that uh, that this uh, that basically Craig dropped it in my lap because I've looked at these on eBay and have been tempted away by the fruit of other other trees you know like uh like bigger batter scarier cold steels oh, I'll, I'll get the twist master later uh running up on a blade is one mistake i am determined not to repeat me too i did it once uh scandinavian designs are definitely the biggest offenders uh to not have a pronounced hilt yeah i did it with a um indura Woo! uh and that's got that big thumb ramp but that didn't that didn't stop me I was bound and determined to be a dumbass that night. Uh, Five Door says, I remember when Craig talked about this twist master during the stream a while back. Very cool. Yes. And let me show you what else he sent me, which is really cool too. Uh, Craig Vincent, that knife looks like it's mom. <laughs> yeah. Open L and like it's dad, a cold steel. Check this out. So I'm going to show it in this sheath uh, that, Craig made for travel. He also sent the sheet that came with it, but the the it's very ill fitting. Uh, this barely fits in the other sheath and doesn't go all the way in. And this sheath that he made for travel is amazing. He it's it's all duct tape and it's got to be two ply corrugated cardboard. It is it's almost it almost feels like wood. It it's got the quality except for the duct tape. If this duct tape were say leather or twine it would have the quality of the sheaths of these filipino swords i mean it's got serious uh so i'm leaving it in the sheath i think a sheath this sheath is part of the the knife that i love now uh but uh, i have one like this that i got from a friend who got from bud k way back in the day uh, and i think that's what this is like a, a true nepalese run-of-the-mill or indian i'm sorry indian run-of-the-mill the kukri and i love it and and the other one i have is dull and the one that craig sent me here is sharp so this thing is is badass i love it it feels great in hand the handle is nice and big and thick uh but is very comfortable that sort of bow tie shape and uh yeah you could you could do a lot of work with this uh you know just indefinitely i think i think i mean i don't know i don't i haven't done anything uh with this one but i know that the one that i have that's dull has sustained a lot of abuse so i think this will too it's great to have a sharp one and it's great to have one sorry i, I should look at what i'm doing here it's great to have one uh sent to me by craig thank you craig i really appreciate this i love it it was a freebie like throw in and man what a cool cool knife god look at how cool kukri's are i mean sorry i keep saying cool but i mean they're just so unusual and threatening <laughs> i love them all right i'm gonna put this back in the sh in the sheath i'm gonna i'm gonna fix straps to this and and carry it just like that 
uh, bound and determined to be a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing my ass off. That's funny. Uh, Craig says, "Wow, I want to trade with you." Uh, okay, Craig, let's let's trade now. He, uh, I'm I'm not. It's not a guarantee. I have things I can part with, but let's 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 think about trading. Let's talk about trading. Uh, I know uh, Five Door. I know you've got sure you've got plenty i would trade for it's i'm not sure if it would be the other way around craig vincent says i discovered that kukri at a pawn shop and picked it up on a hunch yeah uh, i i i i know that that's i'm pretty sure that whoever got that way back in the day got that from bud k or 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 u.s cavalry or one of those catalogs that my middle school buddy and I used to pour over. Oh, I want that. What, okay, on this page. If you could just have one on this page, what would it be? Okay, what about this page? If you could just have one on this page, which one would you pick? Excato, good to have you here, Excato. Actually, you can consider Hapkido to be aggressive Aikido. They are supposedly both descended arts of uh, Daito Ryu Aiki Jiu Jitsu. Huh. Ugh. Uh, Aikido Jiu Jitsu is is like the combative form of Aikido. It's cool to see, it's cool to watch. Uh, I think that's what a lot of what um, Steven Seagal uh, did. I mean, he he was legit before he went around the bend, but I'm sure he's. I don't think he can teach his stuff to anyone, but I'm 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 sure he could probably still hold his own. Right? Am I right? I mean, I know I'm right about he was like one of the only. Uh, white guys ever to to reach his level of training in the style of aikido he did in japan in the 70s uh, and 80s but he kind of went around the bend didn't he excato not to mention hapkido is literally the korean pronunciation of the same chinese character of aikido <laughs> all right well there you go that that sounds pretty ironclad pit how you doing pit before he got fat and turned into an asshole. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, he, he, yeah. It's weird. It's weird to see how it, his de evolution, because uh, he was cool in, in uh, a couple of his first movies. He was cool. Uh, 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 the first one, Above the Law, great movie. And then he was playing an Italian. You know, he's really, really playing Italian. Um, I guess some guys are like that, but not 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 so many. Not so many. Hey, did you see the Oscars? Huh? Did you watch them? Huh? Pitt says, good evening. Well, Pitt, good evening to you, sir. Uh, we're about to wrap up here, so you got to let me know in the next 10 minutes what you were carrying today. Got to know. Northern Knife says, the Kukri Curve is referred to as a 200% cutting edge, as the minimum must move down to the edge to escape. Wait, wait as the medium must move down into the edge to escape the movement. That's just uh, horrifying. I use that principle in three of my knife designs used for crafting and survival. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them. 200%. All right. Is that something you could look up? Is that is there reading to do on that? Oh, that's an interesting concept. Doug Bolt, Bob, the Gurkha soldiers were vicious killers with their kukris in World War II. Yeah, and they still are. <clears throat> they, uh, uh, my my um, brother-in-law, when he was in the Marine Corps, he did a joint exercise with them uh, in like 2002. Uh, he's got a beautiful kukri that they all got, and everyone in his unit got as gifts when they were done, and he. My brother-in-law had massive, massive respect for them, and we had a we had a guy uh, come to a martial arts studio who taught bando, which which is a, a I guess a modern art. I'm not sure if it's the same thing that the kukris used or, or or that the gurkhas used, but it's a it's a kukri fighting art called bando. And the guy was talking. I, I was not present at that seminar, but my teacher later told me that the guy told a story about. Um, a, a, an old Gurkha that he knew who accidentally chopped off the hand of a guy next to him in, in a rush. They were all, you know, rushing into battle and he accidentally just swiped a dude's hand off. Uh, it was there in the way of his super sharp, 200% cutting edge Kukri. So yeah, those dudes knew what they were doing uh, and know what they're doing. Craig Vincent, Bob, I'm much more familiar with Gurkha brand cigar. 
I could go for a cigar right now or a pipe. Yeah, I, I think that in in older days, like if if cigarettes weren't didn't sm didn't kind of smell nasty and um, you know, if they, they weren't bad for you and if I could breathe just the same with that, I'm, I, I know I would be a cigarette smoker like in the old in the Chinatown in the old school uh, movie kind of way. Um, and why did I even bring that up? Oh, cigars. <laughs> Cigars, yeah. I, I I just decided I think I like smoking. Uh, there isn't much to look up on the two percent, uh, two hundred percent edge thing. I've mostly only heard it while discussing efficiency amongst other designers. Okay, all right, cool. But I like that concept. I think I'm gonna start using that. Um, so I hope I don't butcher the concept. Maybe we can talk about that more in the future. Um, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, what do you think of this twist master? I love it. I love the blade shape. The blade shape reminds me a little bit of the black rhino, uh, one of my grail cold steel knives. Uh, Pitt says uh, he carried today the Spyderco Para 3 lightweight uh, WIT uh, Malia. I'm not sure what the WIT is, but the Malia is the um, CJRB, the Olight I5R in titanium. And open mini red in red. Open mini in red. Had to match the shirt. Cool. You know, matchy match. We talk about that here a bit. You know, sometimes you feel matchy, and then other times it's kind of like, well, um, no, I can't. I can't have like for me. I like two knives of the same brand almost never. Uh, too matchy to me. But Craig Vincent says uh, I've been into knives lately, but cigars have been a passion of mine for forty five years. That's cool. That's uh, like anything else, man. After 45 years, you must know your cigars for sure. But also to have a cultivated a, a palette for them where you can determine nuances that, that the average guy like me can't. Split and slices. Thanks, Knife Junkie. Gonna cut out. Have a great weekend, everyone. Have a great weekend, Byron. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next week. Coke, uh, color match, not so much the brand. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Or, or M materials. Um, yeah, I mean, I can get weird. Even blade shapes, I can get weird about. Um, but I think that's a, a variety is the spice of life uh, sort of uh, instinct for me. Dion Page says, Black Talon 2 and Spike Tonto ready for action. That Black Talon 2, that's you and Dave carrying that today. <laughs> what a cool knife. Still has such an impact. That was kind of a silly thing to say, but I guess what I think is uh, it's not like a new release knife, but we have two people uh, happen to be carrying it today. Northern Knife says, I want to say I first heard about the 200% edge thing from Rob Criswell, who worked for Benchmade way back in the day with Emerson and made legendary. So, oh. Is he the guy who made the Conan sword, Rob Criswell? I knew the name sounded familiar. If not, then I know him from somewhere else. But yeah, Doug Bowl got a scoot. Stay safe, Doug. Have a great one, sir. I'm about to pull into the station myself. Craig says, Bob, my Twistmaster has similar, more subtle clip point. It must be the small version. Okay, yeah, this is a three and a half, um, which is nice medium size, if you ask me. Oh, what a great work. They should bring this back. This, this is one that I'm thinking they could make a lot of money on. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's why they don't still have it. Maybe they didn't make a lot of money on it. But it seems like uh, if the price is right, uh, this could be a great uh, open L killer. Just kill it. Just get rid of the open L after all these years. Uh, no, but uh, something I think would be cool to bring back. Bring it back, guys. Bring it back. All right. Well, Mark. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Uh, Manly Comrade and Lion Steel Gitano. Mark Herrera, always great to see your name. See you here, the Manly Comrade, as I like to mention, a deep cut. And I love the Gitano. Of course, that's a small version of the beautiful um, Navaja. All right, I'm ready to call it myself as uh, something like nature is calling as we speak. Be sure to join us on Sunday. Leong Ma. I should, I should mention this up front on these Thursday night knives. So everyone gets to hear who's uh, 
coming. Uh, Liang Ma is on, and what a great guy. Great conversation with a great designer. Liang Ma uh, joins us on Sunday, so be sure to join us then. And then Wednesday for the supplemental. Thanks for the live. Cheeto, thank you so much. I cannot wait to check out the Serrano. That looks, uh, sounds awesome. I mean, you had me with your design and sharp and swedge. Good night, all, says Will B. Good night, Will. Great to have you here, sir. Next month. Cheeto Morita says, tagged you on the Serrano Instagram post, Bob. Ooh, okay. I will check it out. T Fetch. Later. Later, Telecaster uh loyal group good night gents be safe you be safe too loyal group oh okay cheeto i'm such a flake dion page says good night king junkies jim and all you junkies dion have a great night pat these nuts love to you sir and your 38 watches joseph s good night good night to you craig vincent they should have named it the picnic defender yes for when you get attacked while cutting your sandwich that is a bit of what it what it does look like Thanks, Bob, says Pitt. Thank you, Pitt. Have a good one. Join us here next week, uh, hopefully maybe a little bit earlier, and we will all chat again. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>